City of Stevens Point Transportation Commission meeting, recorded April 11, 2022. Okay, I see it's 4.45 then. We can get started with the meeting. Um, switching around my equipment, so. All right, so first thing on the agenda is the roll call. You wanna run that, Talon? Yeah, absolutely. So we have chair listening. Here. Greg Keppel. Here. Tom Bertram. Present. Alder Christensen. Here. Alder Kneebone. Here. And then Vice Chair Peterson. Yeah. I think I got everybody. Okay. Thanks, Talon. All right. Then we'll move to agenda item number two, which is approval of the March 14, 2022 minutes. Uh, Nebone will move to approve. And Keppel will second. Okay. All right. We have a motion by Nebone and a second by Keppel to approve. Is there any further discussion or any questions? Yeah, I'll make a comment. Uh, I commented last time about the uh, the financials. And I, I thought for sure that we had like a, uh, some type of planned actual report previously. Um, but uh, as I dug into it a little bit, I recalled that was from my experience on the, um, the Samoset Council Board for the, the Boy Scouts. And of course, my experience at, at work as well. So I'll come by sometime, uh, Talon, and visit with you. Um, it, it really is a, a better way for us to, to view and regard uh, the financials each month is to be able to have some kind of perspective as opposed to just a, an amount there. And uh, so like I say, I'll come by sometime and, and visit with you and then maybe we can visit with the, um, uh, the controller as well and, and, and get some additional insight. So I just wanted to mention that, thanks. Be happy to join you on that meeting too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Any further comments or discussion? Okay, hearing none, then we'll take the motion to vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, motion carries. Move to agenda topic number three, which is approval of the March 2022 financial and claims report. Kneebone will move to approve. <laughs> Okay, so we have a motion by Nebone to approve and a second by Carolyn. Is there any questions for Talon before we take the vote? <coughs> okay, hearing none, then we'll take the motion to vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? <coughs> okay, motion carries. Move to agenda item number four, which is an update from the transportation superintendent on a couple items. All right, so um, I know um, I'm, we're doing a meeting just kind of to cover these updates, um, but I think there's some big important ones that I wanted you guys to know about. So um, 
we're making some updates to our red route based on the transportation development plan. Um, also, a couple other things went into it. Um, um, we do see quite a lack of ridership on that red route. And then um, also Whiting asked us to reassess kind of um, what level of service they were given. Um, if you do recall, and actually I'll bring up our old route here. Okay, so we were doing this loop, um, so we decided to kind of take that opportunity um, to give us something that we've always wanted to do, and that's connect the red and the yellow um, out towards the business park here. So um, going back here. Um, you'll see the changes on the red route. Um, instead of doing the west side of town at the end of the route, it does it at the beginning. Um, it does create a change, but not necessarily a change in the level of service for the west side. It um, just is better for them departing rather than arriving. Um, and then it goes out, it follows the exact same route until it gets to this part in Whiting. Um, and then it heads over, we'll do a loop in the business park. Um, which also then enables the yellow route to do a slight change to go by Skyward Delta Dental um, orthomolecular as well as um, Furniture and Appliance Mart, which are some of the bigger um, AIG as well, um, which we already went by, or Travel Guard, um, which are some of the bigger employers in our area. And then it'll go do a loop in Crossroads just so people don't have to transfer over to the yellow route and then head back. So it's going to create a lot um, faster service, especially for people that live um, on that south side of town um, and that central um, part of town to get out um, to the east side of town because they'll be able to transfer over. Um, so from there, if there's any other comments here, otherwise we'll take questions. So was it an hour trip on the red line before, Talon? Yep, absolutely, yep, it's an hour okay. trip. And then how does that change the cost to the village of Whiting? Mm, it will be, um, there will, it will be less um, to the village of Whiting, but it, really won't affect our bottom line um, just based on the level of um, funding percentages that con has gone up and I really think it's a more appropriate level of service um, it kind of makes that level of service to Whiting the same as we give to Plover um, or kind of the same amount of miles we give to Plover um, or give to contract with Plover to do in Crossroads so like I said, that does go down, but um, it is leveraged into a better service for Stevens Point to get out to the side of town. So it also then provides more, more service to Plover and more service to Crossroads. Um, is Plover paying any in increased amount for having uh, additional uh, traffic coming their way? Yeah, so um, um, in their current year contract, um, they're not, but we will revisit that. Um, one of the reasons to go into the into Crossroads is just so simply our passengers don't have to get off the bus um, just north of Crossroads, get on a different bus and go down there. Since we have time, we wanted to go ahead and do that loop. Um, so I know, I mean, it is a benefit, quite a benefit for them to, people to get over to Crossroads for them. but also wanted to have the focus on the business park and kind of this east side of town which um, this really is setting us up to add another route based on our TDP recommendations and that's what we'll be looking to do in 2023 and I'll bring those plans to you guys as we go forward. So that red route used to go down to like Tommy's Turnpike and it was it acted as a train First station for people mm -hmm. using the um, Plover taxi 
Mm-hmm. How how does that affect that, or was that not really used at all? Um, it was used very rarely. Um, way more likely that people use that in Crossroad Commons. Um, so we did have one person using it probably over a year ago to do that, and they haven't been using it since then. So um, didn't make that Plover connection. That's what it's called. So when are you planning to make the switch? So um, just as it's warming up here and we can get um, some signs in the ground, so um, we'll be looking to move on it this month to get material within a month from now to get material out and then probably another month or sooner after that. A month and a half, two months. I think one of the biggest um, concerns that came with the red route for a lot of people, especially if they're living down over by Fireside uh, in that area, was that they couldn't get out to Walmart without having to go all the way back downtown and then transferring over to the yellow route. So it was a very time consuming route for them to get out to Walmart. This now gives them the ability to get out there in about 15 minutes. It's a much quicker route out there. It will be a little longer on the way back but they got a better, uh, better option as far as shopping. They were never given that opportunity because of the Tommy's Turnpike. And um, that wasn't really generating much for ridership, but we were getting more complaints on for the fireside area going, well, how do we get out to these shopping locations? Um, we still have access to, uh, we're still giving them access to go to, uh, uh, now they have Walmart as a shopping location for food. They still have save a lot on that route and they can transfer on the onto the blue route to get to Metro Market yet. So we still have we're giving them a better service in that sense that we're trying to improve uh, uh, without having them transfer so much too. That's something we, we want to reduce. you know if, if they can only be on one bus, it's a lot more appealing for a lot of riders and it's less confusing. Um, that's why when we get into crossroads, we head north first up by BioLife because we want to create a transfer location with two buses, the yellow and red, right at the BioLife bus shelter. Uh, so we're not congested in the Walmart area since we know we can't get two buses there at the same time and take up space there. It's very congested. So we wanted to create it on the north side in Stevens Point area before we head across down into Walmart. And we know that that's typically the hottest spot with most of our ridership is for Walmart. Um, so that's why the red route goes straight down the center and, and crossroads right to Walmart and then kind of back out and heads back into town. So then um, we have a plan for conveying the change to the public? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. So um, a lot of physical material will go out where the um, bus route's no longer going to go anymore. Otherwise, it's going to be um, news alert through the um, city websites um, as well as social media, you know, in any other place that we can get it out to um, along our routes, um, posters, things like that. They'll go on our buses as well. That's a great place to communicate with people. And and when uh, when when will this be implemented, Talon? Right now, um, a month and a half, two months, we're looking at. So pretty fast here, um, um, going into the summer. Any other questions on that? Okay. Um, the next thing I wanted to talk about a little bit is our paratransit vehicles. So um, in 2020, we put in an order for three paratransit vehicles. Um, the company, um, uh, communication's been, been rough with the company. Um, we've been on them pretty constantly, but um, 
it's been like, okay, well, we got delayed, we've gotten delayed, we've gotten delayed. Well, now the company shut down that was building or supposed to build our paratransit vehicles. So um, we're looking into some different options. Um, one, um, we'll, be, we'll be able to purchase one vehicle through um, federal procurement, um, but the vehicles have went up greatly in price where we were talking about 75,000 per vehicle. Um, we're now talking about 90 to 125,000 per vehicle. So I just wanted to kind of give you guys an update on that. Once, um, once I have a clear budget um, set aside, um, we'll look at that. I know we had, um, I think it was 40 to $45,000 set aside for the vehicle purchase, so it'll probably be thirty to twenty-five thousand dollars more. Our local share of that um, out of the transit general fund. But like I said, I just kind of wanted to come to you with an update when I get a budget set for that and um, have those hard numbers. So I'll bring that back to you guys for approval. Um, other than that, um, do we have any other staff updates or? Um, not really. I guess if you want to talk about our current staffing, uh, the good news is we have, um, we did get a, hire a bus operator. He is um, going to, for his pre-employment physical tomorrow. So we'll, that'll have all our transit drivers fully staffed. So we're happy to be sitting in that position. Um, uh, we are looking at a dispatcher yet. Uh, we. We have uh, that, we, I, by the, before the week's over, with, we'll, we'll have our determination on that as well. We've done interviews and uh, we've had a second interview as well to have them get used to seeing what the, the job consists of and stuff like that. So we're actually looking very good on the staffing. We're only really short staffed maybe with our rural side with one bus operator and that I'm not sure we're gonna fill even throughout the entire summer to be honest. It's, it's a challenging position for that because once again, that was no guaranteed hours for, for anybody coming in and less than basically 10 hours a month uh, is what they get asked to fill in for. So it's very low hours, so we haven't had even an applicant for that position. We do got a couple of prospects later on that we are looking into um, that might fill that role, but more towards uh, the fall season. We had a, a retired uh, driver that mentioned they were interested in it, so we're gonna hopefully uh, get back to them later on, and if they take that position, then we'll be set for a while on the rural side of that as well. Okay. Anything else? Okay, can you guys hear me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And we can see you too. <laughs> <laughs> Good. All right. Well, then uh, we'll move to agenda uh, item number five, which is the next meeting. Right. So it looks like we're scheduled for uh, Monday, May 9th at 4.45 in the afternoon. I have a question and before we end. Do we need to approve the red bus route change? Hmm. And, yeah, <laughs> and my second question was, you know, in spring we always talked about like youth riding free in the summer. We need to talk about that again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah, and we will. Well, that was we'll next month about. then. Yeah, that was next month. Okay. Um, and then um, with the red route changes, um, because those recommendations were approved through the TDP, um, as well as um, us just being able to um, adjust the routes based on what's needed. I just want to bring those as an update. If we're adding service, getting rid of service, um, things like that, absolutely we'll bring that to your approval. So. Okay, thanks. Okay, thanks, Tom. Then uh, we'll adjourn for the day. Thanks, everybody, for coming in. Hi hey guys. Bye. A video of this meeting is available for viewing on the city's website, stevenspoint.com/videos.